was one of the so-called G20 conspiracists and I felt firsthand what dirty ops feel like. Recently I went to visit the north of Ireland in November to do a fact-finding mission. Uh, in fact the law that they're passing right here, the anti-terrorist bill, is modeled on the 2001 UK Anti-Terrorist Act, and I'll speak about that in a second. First I'll tell you what happened when I tried to take a plane back. So, when I was down there, I interviewed women that had their sons killed by loyalist violence. I interviewed people who had their husbands taken away without trial. I interviewed people who did four years in jail for simply saying something like victory to the IRA. Uh, on my way out of the country, coming back to Canada, the flight I was taking was a U.S. flight. They told me, it was coming to Canada, but it was a U.S. airline. They told me to get on the plane, and they told me to go to the side room. I'm like, okay. And then they said, under the anti-terrorist legislation, Patriot Act, you're not allowed to get on this plane. I'm like, okay, give me my luggage. I'll go somewhere else. They didn't agree with that. They're like, you're under administrative detention. And I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Here's a lawyer's phone number, call him. They took it, they photocopied it, they went through my bag, they photocopied everything in my bag. Now I was smart, I took the plane out of Dublin, not out of Belfast, because Dublin is Ireland, it is not the occupied north, so MI6 and MI5 don't run the place. So uh, they handed me, after they held me for five and a half hours, they handed me to Irish guardy security and they were like this guy's a very dangerous terrorist blah 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 the guardy guy looked at me and laughed but he had to say you have two days to get out of this country or we're going to have to put you in immigration detention I lost my plane ticket and all of that but the thing was more than that the United States was able to detain me for simply trying to talk out about what was going in Ireland for going and doing a fact-finding mission. This law, and currently I'm on the US terrorist list. That, like, I'm on the terrorist list, so if I go to the United States, I can be indefinitely detained. If I go to the US Embassy, I can be indefinitely detained. If I go to any American stuff, I can get indefinitely detained. So I have a personal interest in this bill not being passed. Uh, I've also seen what this bill does by seeing what the UK 2001 Anti-Terrorist Act does. So first we have the case of Miriam Price. She was a member of the 32 County Sovereignty Movement, which rejects the occupation. She did two years and a half in solitary confinement after doing nine months in all men's jail, McGaubrey, for simply holding up a piece of paper at a rally that someone read that they purported was a member of the IRA. So they didn't say that she was a member of the IRA. They didn't say she had anything to do with the IRA. She held up a piece of paper. There's also the case of Martin Corey, who was a 71-year-old man who did two and a half years in solitary confinement on secret trial with a secret trial, Diplock Court. Diplock Court is what they want to bring here, where a police officer can say, we have reason to believe that they may have knowledge of terrorism or they may be promoting terrorism, which in the north of Ireland simply means speaking out against the British occupation. And he did two and a half years in solitary confinement before he was finally released. This guy was 71 years old. We have the case of Christine Connors. She's 21 years old. She's accused by police officers of attacking the British occupational forces. The evidence they used against her, they had 100 police officers at her trial. They had no witnesses that she was involved at all. was Facebook messages. Messages such as, it is obvious that the PSNI, RUC, are the enemies of the Irish people. Facebook messages like, do not talk to the police. Stuff like that. So these 100 cops, and she's already did two and a half years in a really, really horrible jail. The jails there aren't like the ones here, they're like really, really nasty. And simply for Facebook, 
And these are the laws they want to bring over here. Someone looks at my Facebook, I'm definitely screwed. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to talk about the case of the Cree Gavin too. They were two young people. One of them was 17 years old when he was arrested. Six years in jail he's done so far. He was accused of a shooting of an RUC officer. The witness, Witness M, is a secret witness. His father came forward, the father of Witness M, and said Witness M is lying. It turned out in court that Witness M wasn't where he said he was the night this happened. And because it's secret evidence, none of this can be challenged. When Witness M's father came forward, MI6 went and interrogated him and tried to stop him from testifying. There were three questions asked at the appeal. Is there any evidence linking them to the shooting beyond a reasonable doubt? No. Is there any evidence that they in any way assisted in the shooting? No. Is there any evidence beyond a reasonable doubt in any way linking them to this crime? No. At this point in time, they are doing life imprisonment in McGaubrey. These are the laws they want to bring here, where a police officer can just say, I think this person may be engaged in terrorism. These are the laws they want to bring here. And the people that are going to be attacked by these laws aren't the trade unionists. It's going to be the indigenous people. It's going to be the Muslim people. It's going to be the people that are speaking out against the Canadian occupation here and abroad. And as such, we should all raise our voices because we see what these laws do. And we do not want a military police state here. We've seen what this has done in Ireland. And we do not want this here. Thank you.